Now, in previous lessons, we've been looking at the getter and setters for our computed properties. And you can see that the setter code is called the exact moment that the property is set with a new value. Now, if you didn't need to compute the value of a property with a getter, but you just wanted to monitor when the value of a property gets changed, then instead of using computed properties, Swift actually has something else, which is called an observed property, where you can trigger code when a property's value is changed. So, for example, if you wanted to detect when somebody tries to set the pizza size in inches to some unrealistic number, say you try to buy a 33 inch pizzas, well, that doesn't really make any sense because I don't know anybody who sells 33 inch pizzas. If you know somebody, let me know in the comments so I can go and eat those pizzas. But in our code, we don't really want this to ever happen because the calculations that are performed are invalid because this is not a valid size. So in this case, we can actually turn this into an observed property. So for example, let's say that pizza in inches is set to 10 by default, and then we can open a set of curly braces. And inside here, we can set our property observers. So one of these observers is called will set and another one is called did set. Now they essentially do exactly the same thing. And what they do is they monitor when this pizza in inches property gets changed. Right before it gets changed, this block of code will trigger will set and right after it changes, then this block of code will execute did set. So let's try it out. First things first, you'll notice that we're getting a warning from Xcode because our pizza and inches used to be a constant and both computed properties and observed properties have to be variables. So we have to change that to a var. So now inside will set and did set, there are two variables that we get access to and they're slightly different. So inside will set, we have something called new value. But inside did set, we have something called old value. And so in this case, let's say if I were to set the size pizza in inches to, uh, I don't know, eight. Now at this point, as soon as I set it to a new value, the will set and did set both get executed with the will set executing first and then did set coming straight afterwards. And inside will set, we're printing the new value. So that's the new value that the property is being set to. And in the did set, we can get access to this thing called old value, which is the value that this property used to be. Now, if inside will set, you wanted to access the old value, then you would simply use the current variable's name. So you can say pizza in inches. And inside did set, if you wanted to get access to the new value, again, you would access pizza in inches. And that is because at the point when will set is called, remember this hasn't been changed yet. It's still equal to 10. So when you print its value, it will be equal to 10. But when you print the new value that it's going to be set to, then that of course will be eight. And inside did set, it's exactly the opposite situation. Because at this point, the value of pizza and inches has already been set, then the old value is equal to the previous value that it used to be, and pizza and inches is now equal to eight. So what we can do here that can be quite useful is we can check to see if the new value of pizza and inches, which remember can be accessed through the property name. So if pizza and inches is greater than or equal to, let's say 18, because our favorite pizzeria, their largest pizza is 18 inches. So anything that's larger than 18 that gets inputted here is invalid. So if that happens, then we're going to print invalid size specified pizza in inches set to the largest size, which is 18 inches. And we of course have to do that. So we can now tap into pizza in inches and we can set it to equal 18.
So now, if I, at a later point, try to set this property to something completely unrealistic, say a 33 inch pizza, then at this point, we will get printed invalid size specified pizza in inches set to 18. And if you try to print pizza in inches, even though it looks like it should print 33, right? Because we set it here, actually it's going to print 18. So that is an observed property. And we use it to observe when its value is changed and to perform various bits of code or logic when that happens. Now, in the next lesson, I've got a challenge for you to see if all of this makes sense. So head over there and you're going to build your own calculator using computed properties.